Hello students, welcome back to the session. Today we are going to discuss about modeling styles. So in modeling styles we have mainly three types of modeling. But we consider four type also as switch level design. So we have gate level modeling where we use primitive gates. We have data flow modeling in which we use a keyword like assign a value to another value. Then we have behavioral modeling and then switch level modeling. So today we will concentrate on switch level modeling. So it uses transistor level modeling like the basic transistor if we talk about the VLSI technology or any IC or processor or controller they are made up of transistors and we can have a design which is directly on the level of transistors. Normally we make gates by using various transistors. So let us go on the very ground level of this designing and discuss about switch level modeling. Before that we will see which topics we are covering from unit 1 and unit 2. Say already we have completed uh, poor maximum portion of unit 1. So in unit 1 the remaining portion is rem remaining about system task and compiler directives, hierarchical access and user defined primitive and their subtopics. And unit 2 is about switch level modeling where we will see basic transistors which is CMOS switch, bidirectional gates, time delays with switch primitive and their subtopics. We will also see the strength contention with tri-register nets. What is strength? We know that we are dealing with voltage levels. If we want to run our digital system which has a language of zeros and ones. So these zeros and ones doesn't uh, flow in the digital values. They travel in form of electrical signals. Say when we say the signal is strong or near the high VDD supply then it is logic one. If it is near ground we say it is off. So there will be strengths uh, and we, we use various kind of objects, various kind of uh, the drives and various kind of things in our system like we may have the virtual capacitors and we may have the supplies and we need to pull pull up and pull down the designs. So there will be strength levels. So strength name and strength levels can also be defined in a programming language that we will see in the coming slides. So let us have an example of the strength and contention resolution. Like here we have abbreviations where we have supply. Say supply 1 and supply 0. Its strength will ha be strongest because if we have to give priority to the supply. It's like giving priority. So we have supply. It will have strongest strength. Then we will have strong, strong 1, strong 0, pull, pull 1, pull 0, weak, weak 1, weak 0, it has weakest strength. We may have high impedance values, high impedance 1, high impedance 0. So for example if we are using a buffer, buffer may have a supply 1, buffer is supplied with supply 1. So when I say supply 1 that means strength of one state in the output and output is strength is 1 and comma pull 0 that means this buffer strength of 0 state in the output and where uh, that we are defining as output comma input. So here we can see this table suppose we have i1 and i2 two inputs logic value of input 1 i1 and logic value of input i2 so we may have 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so if both the inputs are 0 the logic value of output will also be 0 that means there is no contention so if we have 1 input 1 as 0 input 2 as 1 and the logic output is 1 
then there is contention stronger signal and who is prevailing prevailing is the second input because it is giving high in this case input 1 is 1 so who will prevail i1 1 1 will get 1 but there is no contention again so we have now when we design a system we may need to require all these three type of modeling styles all together normally designers they use combination of all the three modeling like behavioral data flow and gate level where in behavioral models high level algorithm is implemented with little concern for the actual hardware and in data flow module is implemented by specifying how data is flowing between registers and gate level we are concerned about the basic gates like AND gate, OR gate and NOT, NOT gate and in switch level we talk about transistor the actual hardware which is missing in the behavioral description so designers can create lower level models from the higher level models either manually or automatically so this is nothing but logic sentences in the first introduction session we have discussed about it so we'll have some fixed patterns like we can use initial or always blocks these are the keywords so these are the basic components for behavioral modeling like in initial we have a fixed uh, syntax like we begin then there will be our statements and end this will run when simulation starts and it terminates when control reach the end of our uh, statement whatever we are defining along with initial there will be always always begin our statements and end always we are we have seen in d flip flop example while discussing about the eda playground now for the switch level at switch level the most basic transistor we are using MOS transistors in de designing the VLSI chips the basic element around any VLSI chip is say MOS transistor this MOS may be NMOS and PMOS when we combine NMOS and PMOS we call it as CMOS so designers must be familiar with logic gates their configurations at the circuit level and they may choose the transistors at transistor level they can design a connecting transistor they can make various gates so Verilog has a provision to do the design description at switch level using such MOS transistors so switch level modeling forms the basic level of modeling digital circuits so switches are primitive here like in gate uh, level designing gates will be primitive when you primitive means what it's simple we use keywords AND gate NOT gate NOR gate these are the keyword directly we can use so in switch level modeling we can use PMOS and NMOS as the primitives the switch level primitives Verilog provides mechanism for modeling CMOS transistor they be that it behaves like switches so a more detailed modeling scheme that can catch some additional electrical problems when transistors are used in this way now little used because circuits generally are not built this way more seriously model is not detailed enough to catch many of the problems so we use uh, simulators like spice like simulators or non-linear differential equation solvers so this is about the software but in hardware there may be the delays there may be the uh, problems associated with the silicon the virtual capacitance and the resistances so basic switch primitives which we are going to use for CMOS we know it is combination of NMOS and PMOS so we will use NMOS and PMOS as switch primitive so what is its syntax NMOS in brackets out comma in comma control so first we must have output input and control signal similarly PMOS will have syntax as PMOS out in and control so if we check the truth table for them for NMOS switch say this is control this is data input so here we can see control input will maybe 0 1 either it is true uh, false true x uh, and z unknown or impedance similarly at data input we may have 0 1 
or we may have unknown condition or we may have impedance condition so if control is zero and the input is zero then there will be impedance if the control is one and input is zero so it's like it will give zero and MOS so we have pull up and pull down two logics so when it is when control is X unknown and input is zero it will go low for impedance and zero it is low so here you can observe that when your control is zero it is at high impedance and at data input if it is unknown then if it is unknown is with zero control it is high impedance otherwise all unknown if Z impedance is at input all values will have input uh, as impedance similarly for PMOS PMOS we have same input same output so the if control is zero will have same here and for one will have same thing so these are like complement then we will have resistive switches NMOS and PMOS we can represent with their resistive counterparts so its syntax is given by R and MOS R stands for resistive so R and MOS output 1 input 1 control 1 and R PMOS output 2 input 2 control 2 in programming we will see how to use them in detail but we have to remember the syntax they close with the semicolon it inserts a definite resistance between the input and the output signal but retains the signal value the RPMOS and RNMOS switches function as unidirectional switches the signal flow is from the input to the output side now strength levels related to our switch level designing where we are using RNMOS RP MOS or CMOS, CMOS switches so we may have say supply drive it is input strength output strength is pull drive then strong drive it is also pull drive input strength if it is pull drive output strength is weak drive so like this we have to use various strength levels while defining the transistor level programming so pull up and pull down this concept in VLSI also we are going to study in detail a MOS transistor functions as resistive element when when it is in active state so realization of resistance in this form takes less silicon area in the IC as compared to resistance realized directly now here one thing you have to always remember that we don't use separate resistors or capacitors inside IC IC is a monolithic technology where we take a silicon and on the silicon material we develop various transistors so if we have if we want a resistance or a capacitance we, we create it in the form in a virtual form by using silicon only so IC as compared to resistance result uh, say pull up and pull down represent such resistive elements when we say pull up bracket X air net X is pulled up to the supply one through a resistance pull down say Y it pulls Y down to supply 0 supply 1 if something is going to the higher level it is termed as pull up if it is going to lower level it is considered as pull down so pull up and pull down primitives we can use as loads for switches or to connect the unused input ports to VCC or ground respectively so for a CMOS switch so we form it by using PMOS and NMOS we, are, we connect them in parallel the input leads are connected together on the one side and the output leads are connected together to the other side I will attach one diagram here for this CMOS inverter the CMOS switch is used like it's a uh, it's we check the syntax it is CMOS CSW out in and control P control so along with that we will have bi bidirectional gates so bidirectional gates will continue in the continue uh, will continue it in the coming session